get started with my formal remarks, let me, um, on behalf of all of us, I think, really thank Patricia, Neil, the entire staff at Irish American Magazine that I've just had the pleasure to get to know recently, many of you I know for decades, but to think about what they've done to bring our community together and to uh, particularly initiate this life sciences dinner and program. Would you join me in giving a big round of applause to Patricia, Neil, and the crowd? Thank you very, very much. Well, it's, it's, it's an amazing privilege and pleasure to be in front of all of you tonight, I have to say, uh, uh, you know, and follow in the footsteps, footsteps of, the, of the two previous keynote speakers, Barbara Murphy, who's not here tonight, but Michael Dowling, who is. Um, I have to say, my colleagues at Genentech and Roche would be very jealous to know that I'm in the same room as Dr. James Watson this evening. Uh, <clears throat> You know, Dr. Watson, uh, for the past 40 years, Genentech has been focused on biotechnology. We have gigantic sculptures of the DNA helix. We've got our, the main street through our 8,000 person campus is called DNA Way. You must come out and pay a visit to us. By the way, Dr. Watson told me tonight, he just found out he's 53% Irish, and I think we like to round up in this room, don't we? <laughs> so I think he's pretty much 100% Irish. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I have to say what a privilege it's been to get around and to meet as many of my fellow honorees as I have tonight. Just an incredible group of individuals that are here tonight, those that couldn't make it. And I think about the contribution across the entire spectrum of healthcare, from direct patient care to uh, academia to, to uh, all forms of healthcare, including supporting patients and, and, and their families and communities. I feel very honored to be myself in this company. And I would just ask you one more time to give a big round of applause to all the honorees tonight on my behalf as well. Thank you very much. So being here tonight, um, you know, gives me a chance to talk about two things that, that I cherish. One is my Irish roots. And the second is the opportunity that I've been given to contribute to healthcare. And I do see it very much as an opportunity. And in fact, the, the first, my Irish roots, uh, very much shape the second. And in fact, all aspects of my life. Uh, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be keen to notice that I'm probably the first keynote speaker that doesn't have an Irish accent. So I, I, I do have a bit of a heaviness on the American, on the Irish-American side. But I'll get to that. And that may be the last time you do that, Patricia. But. Uh, uh, let me share a little bit about my Irish, Irish heritage and tell you what our roots were. Um, I was born in America, raised here and in Europe, but the Irish connection for me has always been an incredible presence in my life. In fact, the name O'Day has been a, a, a badge to prove my Irishness, and I do wear it with great, great pride. We actually have, in addition to my family members tonight, Two other O'Days with us this evening, or, or O'Dees, as they've corrected me several times since I've walked into the room. We've got uh, Tim O'Day, O'D, from a fantastic organization called Barrettstown, which provides support for seriously ill children and their families. And we have Katrina O'Day at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And I just want to ask both of you, do you have the same trouble when you check into flights and hotels with that darned apostrophe in the name. I, I tell you, I always feel sorry for the people in line behind me because I know it's going to take an extra 15 minutes for them to find out whether the name was spelled with the apostrophe, without the apostrophe, and who I really am that I'm trying to check in here. So, but I'm, I'm grateful that we have uh, some old days uh, in addition to myself in the room here. My Irish ancestors came over from County Clare. Thank you so much for the music tonight. I know some of that emanated from County Clare. Uh, around 1850, and they began working on the railroads, and then eventually emigrated more to the western part of the United States, ended up in Mar Montana working on an oil refinery. In fact, that's where my father was born, and he grew up in Montana. Uh, I have wonderful, um, my, my, my father, uh, who passed away around 15 years ago now from ALS, 
he was very, very intent on making sure we understood our Irish roots. And he took us on several pil pil pilgrimages back to County Clare and to Ireland. In fact, the picture you saw Patricia have up there on the screen was of one of our pilgrimages when we went back to the famous O'Day Castle back there, which if you haven't been to it in Ennis, you must go. It's a small turret, but it's, uh, it's, really, uh, it's really very meaningful to me. And, and, uh, and, and I never saw the snakes as a sig signal of health care, but I'll look at it differently. I always thought them as, uh, as rather fighting Irishmen that, that fended off the Nordics with their swords and their snakes. But, but you've given new meaning to that, which is very helpful. Um, I do believe it's very important that we stay rooted in our origins and that we keep a sense of gratitude to our ancestors for their courage to overcome adversity and build a new life for future generations, which Neil and Patricia have talked about tonight. And I think that's been a very central part to who I am as a part person. You know, the gratitude uh, has driven many aspects of my life. The opportunities that I've been given were hard earned by my ancestors, and I feel responsibility to make their efforts worthwhile. And I believe this is common amongst many people I've spoken to here tonight. In fact, my Irish heritage is of great help to me in, in striving to make a difference in my work. And there are certain traits, or many traits, but there are certain traits that I think of as being intrinsically Irish and that I particularly aspire to. The first of those is perseverance. I often think of the backbreaking manual work that was done by my Irish ancestors. I think of the courage and per perseverance that helped them to overcome real adversity, real adversity in life. And in my role as a CEO in the cushioned corporate world, I realize how privileged I am. In fact, I'm often reminded of the line uh, and the, the famous Irish poet Seamus Heaney, his poem Digging, where he said, but I'm no spade to follow men like them. And although I did a bit of landscaping, I, I will never get my hands dirty or have that kind of physically challenging work, but I still aspire to that sense of perseverance. I believe the same dogged determination that helped our ancestors to survive is the one that we need today to approach the challenges in healthcare. I, I really believe we, we need that. And the ability to overcome the challenges in healthcare, to innovate, to make real breakthroughs like so many of my colleagues here tonight have made requires a truly steely determination and perseverance. The second intrinsically Irish quality that I aspire to is the drive to explore new frontiers. You know, perseverance alone isn't enough. Uh, we need to be willing to venture outside of new territory, uh, to, to remain curious and have a pioneering mindset. Exploring new, new frontiers is also very much a part of the history and culture of Ireland. Our ancestors showed great courage as they stepped on those first boats on the trip across the Atlantic. You know, there was nothing they could Google to find out they were going to. They couldn't pre-book an Airbnb. Uh, there wasn't something at the other end to take them somewhere. And, and I think their courage is extraordinary. I, I've always been drawn to exploring new places myself. Uh, I'm grateful to have uh, an Irish-American wife and Mara Dolan. Uh, and we've together explored so many and had the opportunity and privilege to live in so many different geographic places in this wonderful world. And, and that's certainly been inspired by myself and that wandering spirit also from my father because he moved us around as we were growing up. And this experience in living in different cultures has also given me a deep appreciation for diversity and its critical role in innovation. I believe that only when you bring differing perspectives to the table can you really solve the most difficult problems that we have in our society? And certainly that's true in healthcare. In fact, in Genentech alone, here in the United States, we have 41 different nationalities that are represented in the workforce. I'm convinced that without that mix, we would not have made the progress we made in the past four decades. And by the way, I mean, the same applies in my mind to our country as a whole. The contributions of our ancestors and the many other nationalities that came here are the foundation of America's success. Long may that diversity thrive and inclusivity that must come with it. Of course, when I think of exploring new frontiers in healthcare, 
I think of it in a broader view, obviously, than just a geographic understanding of questioning the boundaries that seem possible. This is very much on my mind as we look at the new frontiers in healthcare. And that, for me, in my journey, is healthcare data and its seemingly endless potential. I'm constantly asking myself whether we are doing enough as an industry, as a field, to utilize big data in its form today. Medicine has become increasingly personalized over the past two decades, and the deeper understanding of disease biology and the use of more sophisticated diagnostics is prevalent today. But if we can add to this insights provided by healthcare data, I believe we can ignite much faster progress than we have ever known before in terms of advancing patient care and the development of medicines. And why do I say that the timing is right now as opposed to five years ago or 10 years ago? Well, I believe, and thanks to many people in this room, that the availability of large, robust, and va validated longitudinal data sets is more prevalent today than ever in the past. Deep sequencing on patients and following those patients over a long period of time. That's number one. Number two is the availability of computing power in terms of being able to manage those data points and the knowledge to interrogate those data to create insights with machine learning, artificial intelligence, and others. And I believe we're at a point now, at least in my experience, where these capabilities are at an inflection point. They're increasing exponentially, not longitudinally. I can speak from my own experience at Roche. We're still in the very early days of using this data and the insights that come with it on our development journey from lab to patient. But to give specific examples, we're making more informed decisions today on which targets, which new scientific targets to pursue. We're reducing the time it takes to recruit patients for clinical trials. In many cases, we're looking for ways to replace randomized clinical trials with real-world data or observational studies as those become more robust. Certainly, it's informing our discussions with health authorities and payers around the globe. Helping healthcare systems decide which patients should be treated with a particular medicine or intervention will certainly lead to greater efficiency, which we need throughout the world in, in healthcare systems. Our current focus has been predominantly on oncology, but we've made other strides in fields of ophthalmology, infectious, infectious disease, and others. So we're firmly committed to that, and, and, and I see huge potential. But there is one key thing about this, and that is we can't do it alone. Collaboration is key to all of this. In fact, only 4% of patient data today exist in randomized clinical trials. All the money that's spent by academia and industry, only 4% of patients are ever involved in a clinical trial. Can you imagine the power of harnessing the other 96%? And that is what I believe is really happening today. I have the privilege of sitting on two very innovative boards, one called Foundation Medicine in Boston, one Flatiron Health here, right here in New York City. And they are looking at these new boundaries. One is looking at deep sequencing long data on patients for the best cancer diagnosis and care. And the other one is looking at taking electronic medical rec record systems and making sense of them, giving unstructured data structure and finding very powerful insights through data analysis and computing power that we can look into those data. And the interesting thing, the more people I speak to on this healthcare data topic, the more I realize we all share the same vision, and that is to improve the patient experience. I know I personally feel a great deal of excitement around this, but I also feel a great deal of responsibility in my position, and I feel a great sense of urgency because I think time is ticking for patients. There's so much more we can do to address the world's unmet medical needs and to ease strain on healthcare systems, and I firmly believe that harnessing healthcare data and its potential is at the core of that. So what can we do, in my humble opinion? You know, I think we have an opportunity in our lifetime to take personalized medicine to a whole new level, and I believe that those of us in this room can seize that. When I ask what I can do, what we can do, there's two things that come to my mind. The first is, because we haven't been first as an industry with big data to harness it, many other industries have been in advance of us, I think we need to 
be very open to change about our industry in healthcare. Uh, you know, we're a highly regulated industry. We're uh, in good ways connected to our past, but we have to challenge ourselves to be even more pioneering and to move things even more quickly for the benefit of patients and help all stakeholders realize the value of this. And secondly, and I believe this is something that we could even do amongst our community here, I believe we need to collaborate in two ways. We will need to increasingly reach across our usual boundaries, work together across industry, academia, medical practice, and those of you working in the healthcare systems to make this happen. So in conclusion, if you allow me, uh, we can together, as a community, make a very significant difference on the improvement of healthcare over the coming years. In fact, I'm convinced that 10 years from now, as we sit at this dinner, the attendees of this dinner will be talking about progress that we couldn't even imagine today, and much of that will have been empowered or enabled by our ability to have harnessed data and created new insights. By applying the traits of our ancestors to our work, their courage and perseverance, their drive to explore new frontiers, we can continue to play a part in transforming healthcare. And I, for one, can think of no better way to make our ancestors proud and make their sacrifices worthwhile. Thank you for your attention.